What's going on, Colts Nation? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. So guys, you already see the title of this video, and I'm sure even 24 hours after what we just witnessed has gone by, I'm sure the feelings of this is still fresh in everyone's mind. Cody, we're just going to come out and straight up ask, I mean, are the Indianapolis Colts at this current moment in time the worst team in the NFL? <laughs> well, with after how the last two weeks have gone and the fact that the Colts have lost six straight, you know, it's hard it's hard to argue with nine straight losses with Chicago, but Colts are kind of there, man. Um they're they're definitely in the conversation, I would say. Uh them them and Houston at this point. But at least Houston has been competitive the last couple of weeks, except for Jacksonville. Uh the Colts have not really been competitive and they've it, it, it's like they find new ways to embarrass Colts fans. It's actually amazing mm. how they do that. Um, so I don't know if I say the worst team because there's still teams out there, but certainly the last few weeks definitely had me asking the question like, yeah, they might actually be with how bad they've been with how non-complimentary this team is to each other, to both units. It's just, it's so bad. And that's what bad teams do, Derek. They, they find ways to lose. They don't find ways to win. That's what the Colts have done all year and it's just it's unfortunate yeah i mean it, it, you could definitely make an argument for them being one of the worst teams because yeah we talk about this defense and how you know it's been put in a bad situation about with the offense i mean the problem you have is is over the last few weeks uh you have scored the last two weeks you've scored 13 points uh the colts going into this game actually went 31 straight possessions, Cody, without scoring a touchdown. So in the span of from the last time they scored a touchdown against the Vikings, three weeks prior to that, they didn't score a touchdown up until that moment in time. So that just mm. goes to show you just how inept this uh, offense has been. I mean, even Denver put up 23 points against or 24 points against the Kansas city chiefs and their loss against the chiefs this last week. So, and then even Houston, like you said, Houston, at least over the last few weeks has been extremely competitive. They've been in all their games. It's been one score games. They actually have won a game recently. Uh, the Colts haven't won a game in almost two months. Uh, even Chicago, yeah, Chicago got blown out against the Lions. But then again, I mean, the Lions, I think I mean, everyone admits the Lions might have the best offense in the NFL at the moment. And Chicago, for the most part, has, you know, been competitive with some pretty decent teams as of recently. I mean, the only other team I could say that maybe is worse than Indianapolis at this moment in time might be the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, because Arizona, uh, from an offensive standpoint, the fact that they don't have Kyler Murray anymore and their defense is just falling apart, Arizona might be the only team that's worse in the NFL at this moment than the Indianapolis Colts. I mean, you're averaging over the last few weeks on offense, you've been averaging only uh, 13 points a game, if you're lucky. Uh, over the last three weeks, you have given up uh, you've given up an average of 32 points a game over the last three weeks. I mean, it's just been a total disaster from all perspective. And the sad matter of the fact is, is your MVP of your team is your kicker who is over the last, I'm, I think over the last three weeks has had to make, he's literally had to make seven field goals for you to even score points. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's how sad this Colts team has has been is that the kicker has scored more points in the last four weeks than the Colts offense has. I mean, it's terribly sad, Cody. I mean, and from a coaching perspective, we know where things have standed ever since this season has started. This team has never been ready to beat anyone. I mean, there literally has not been a point all year that the Colts have outcoached anyone. I know the Colts have won four games this year. Maybe one time this year they've outcoached a team. Maybe. 
but that's it. I mean, this team just right now can't get out of their own way. I know that some people will say that, oh, like, you know, they're, they're tanking, they're trying to do this and that. Well, they're tanking, but they're also being inept to even keeping it a game. That's the difference. Uh, they're just showing their hand right now that they can't stop anyone and can't put points up on anyone. I mean, it's safe to say that this team just might be the worst in the NFL at the moment. The fundamentals of how this team was built have fallen apart. They can't protect their quarterback. I know it's been better, but they still can't protect their quarterback. They can't get after the pat the passer anymore. You know, they didn't have a sack on Daniel Jones all game. Uh, you know, they're injured. You know, they're definitely injured in certain ways. Uh, they have some key guys that are now on IR that are out for the rest of the season. Only one more game left, mercifully. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this team just cannot do anything, you know, anywhere. Like, it's just – it's honestly amazing, Derek, how bad uh, this offense has been. It's only gotten worse, which is just saying something. Because we said it can't get worse than Matt Ryan. Well, Nick Foles has been worse than Matt Ryan. Like, I don't know how – that statement makes any sense, but it's true. This team is offense. I mean, my goodness, like you talked about it, they've scored 13 points a lot in the last two weeks, 13 total points. That's unbelievable. Yeah. Like that's, that's <laughs> historically bad. Like it's against oh, the two just, of the potentially worst defenses in the NFL and stopping the run, which that, is supposed to be your you bread something. and butter. That tells you something. It's just bad play calling, bad situational awareness. And just like this team has just given up, Derek. There's no fight left in this team. This locker room, this team, they're broken, man. They're a broken team. Wouldn't be surprised if some guys want out of this team, and I don't blame them because the culture has just gone to crap. Let's just be completely honest, 100%. Chris Ballard's culture is awful right now. This team yeah. is awful. This culture is awful. Nobody holds anybody accountable, and it's just the wagon has fallen off, you know? It's fallen off. The wheels are falling off the wagon. It's just, it's bad. It's really yeah. bad. And I don't say that lightly, but like the fact that it's historically bad uh, tells you something against some defenses that aren't even that good. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I told you about this before we came in here. Like this was a team that like 13 months ago, people were saying this is a team that nobody wanted to face. Because you had the best rushing attack in the NFL in Jonathan Taylor, and you had a defense that was capable of creating some turnovers and you know being able to score some points on some people and be able to hold people accountable. But then in that short span time, we have gone from a team that the media said nobody wanted to face to now potentially being we might be the laughing stock of the NFL at this point. Uh, and it, it has been a problem for the entire way up, right? Like the owner getting involved in, in decisions that he shouldn't be, uh, the GM being incompetent about the fact that, you know, this quarterback room has not been fixed. Uh, coaching has not been good all year at almost at, at, like in most levels, especially the offense. And players' standpoint, just nobody taking nobody taking that step and just actually taking it and running with it. I mean, it's just one of those situations that you you can't wait until next year when you get a new coaching staff, you get potentially new executives coming in, you potentially got a new quarterback coming in, and a bunch of other players coming back. You know, you're like, man, we just need some kind of fresh. Uh, some fresh air to kind of air the stink out of this building. Cause it's it just been so weird to watch this Colts team crumble the way it has. And I tell you what, man, if Jim or seriously considers bringing back Jeff Saturday and Chris Ballard, I mean, he's digging this team's grave. Like yeah. they need to restart. Like I'm not even kidding. Like they need a full restart. They need to cut bait with some guys. Need to keep some of those core young guys, and they just need to restart, man, from the top down. They need to. Like, there, there's not a question anymore. And I know there's people that are going to be out there that are going to defend Chris Ballard, and we have defended Chris Ballard, um, you know, probably to a fault at times. But like, 
the core principles of your team, the things that you have built your team on are failing you. They failed you all year. Mm -hmm. This division is up for the taking this year, and you have completely fallen flat on your face because of some of the things that you thought were your strengths have turned into your biggest weaknesses. Mm -hmm. And you've also failed to address the most important positions in the NFL, primarily the quarterback position. You just have, yep. you know, you've had opportunities, Chris. You yep. have. Don't unless, act like you haven't had opportunities. You have. Unless we, unless Ballard completely changes his uh, philosophy on how he does things, then, yeah, I mean, it's going to get to a point where we're just going to have the same problem, right? I mean, people have been saying it. Like, Ballard puts too much emphasis on getting guys in unimportant positions and asking them to be all pros and do more than what their position is worth. And then paying guys that don't, that are not, you know, performing very well. I mean, you see a lot of the contracts that are going on. I mean, we're going to talk a lot about this in the off season and we'll see how it works, but there's a lot of guys on this roster that are getting paid way too much money for the uh, performances that they're putting up. There's a couple guys here that are not doing their jobs. Well, you clearly failed to establish uh, a foundation in the most important position on the football field, and that is the quarterback. There's a lot of problems going on in this organization, and I mean, it's it sucks that we're in this situation, Cody. I never would have thought that going into this season, I would be having this conversation with you. I, I couldn't, I can't no. imagine it. I don't, for the life of me, cannot believe that. Going into the offseason, when we had even people in the national media saying that the Colts are uh, the clear favorite to win the AFC South and are now almost guaranteed a top five pick in the draft. I, I just I, I can't. I, it's unreal. I can't even wrap my head around it still. Yeah, which is exactly why you need to cut bait and restart because – what has Chris Ballard honestly done, like record wise? Like, what has he done? Like, look at his resume. Like, that's a losing resume. Jim Mercer can say all he wants that Chris Ballard's a winning GM. He's a losing GM. Just look at the record. Look at this lack of division titles. Look at the one playoff win. Yeah. It speaks for itself, Derek. It speaks for itself. Look at the guys that you're paying and look at the premium positions in the NFL. I mean, my gosh, you look at the guys that the Colts are paying a lot of money to, a guard, right? Mm -hmm. You're paying a, you know, I don't even know what other position. You're playing a slot corner. Like you see some of these other teams, you know, like the Chiefs. You're and I know they have Patrick Mahomes, but they're paying the quarterback. They're paying the tackle. They're paying the most important position. They're paying and, the paying receivers. For them. You're, you're yeah, paying the, and true. we are paying a tight end, Cody, $8 million, who has caught one pass in the last five weeks. And he's right. been healthy. He's been healthy. Right. And that's the problem. Yeah. Like you're paying these guys too much money for not getting any production out of them. The Mo Ali Cox contract just bewilders me, Cody. He's getting paid $8 million a year to do nothing, to do nothing yep. for this team. Nothing like that. That's yeah. just another yet, thing where it's like, you should not be getting paid even at this point for the production that Molly Cox is giving you, you shouldn't even be getting paid a, a literally 30% of that. Shouldn't be. No. If you're going to only catch one 20. pass every other few weeks, then you don't deserve you don't deserve 3 million dollars. You don't deserve that. Yeah. It's funny because he would rather pay a tight end who's had what? 20, 30 catches max in a season, that amount of money, but he wouldn't pay Chris Reed pennies on the dollar. Yeah, he wouldn't like, pay what Chris heck, Reed what? like six million dollars to, you know, yeah. say, hey, we want to pay you six million dollars this next year. Come be our right guard. Be our right or guard. Or he was too You're cheap start... to bring back to Nico Watry. Like for not that much more money than you wanted him for. Like those kind of things where it's just like players don't want to come here. They don't want to stay here if you're gonna lowball them all the time. Like I get you don't want to overpay for guys, yeah. but like the fact that like the Colts have had really good guys that they find, right? They've done a really good job. I'll say this. Really good job of finding guys like in free agency uh, for cheap contracts, right? But that doesn't that can't keep working. 
right? If you find some of these guys, you find these diamonds in the rough, you pay those guys, right? You give yeah. them extensions, right? It's weird because, like, in some ways, Ballard has done that. And in other ways, he hasn't done that. He hasn't yeah. done that at a thing that's his core principle, line, offensive and defensive line. The fact that he's chosen to go young and it's failed twice tells you all need to, all you need to know. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. He does not know what he is doing. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say, Derek. That's the problem. Oh, I mean, it, it, why are the Colts the worst team in the NFL? Well, you don't have the quarterback, right? That's the big debacle, and that's something we're going to be talking about for literally the next three, four months. Is just that quarterback, 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 quarterback. Like this team is desperate for a quarterback that is going to stick around for more than one year. It's desperate for a good quarterback that's going to stick around for multiple years. That's the biggest problem. And you, you fail, you have failed to do that several times over. And then you look at the lines, like you said, it, it paying, you're paying your premium guard $20 million in extension money next year. When he is ever since he has been drafted after his third season, he has not looked like the elite left guard that you drafted. And yet we're about to pay him the most money of any guard in the NFL. Like you gotta, you gotta rework that money. You're paying somebody something that he doesn't deserve. And then on top of it, you know, you're like you said, we're not filling in. It's so weird because, you know, Ballard's always been about building in the trenches, but yet we let a bunch of people go and that's really hurting us right now. And then on the defensive line, again, you know, you're paying DeForest Buckner, and I love DeForest Buckner. He's one of the elite defensive tackles in the NFL that does a great job of what he does. But, you know, you're also paying Grover Stewart $10 million a year. And, like, yes, Grover Stewart has been phenomenal in stopping the run. But I'm sorry. Like, you, you need pass rush. Like, stop paying these defensive tackles 10, 15, 20 million dollars a year and abandoning the defensive ends, right? Like we need edge rushes. You need a guy that can take over every single game like a TJ Watt does or a Miles Garrett does or something like that. You need somebody like those to be able to make things go further. You're not getting that same production. And I mean, you know, wide receivers, I mean, we're we're struggling right now and you know, it, it's been a little bit of both. You know, it's been the wide receivers not helping the quarterback and the quarterback not helping the the receivers as well, not finding the wide receivers, right? Um, and, of course, the coaching has been the big issue as well. I mean, there's so many different things, and we're going to talk about this more and more. It's just rough because, like, it, there are so many different things that have gone wrong, and it's – it sucks because like Cody, even if we fix part of this, even if you like, even if we get, you know, a decent quarterback in there and, you know, the right coaching candidates in there, you know, does it actually fix this team right away? I mean, it makes it's, you it's wonder if it actually even does. Yeah. There's far more of an issue now than a quarterback quarterback's the most important thing. There's a lot of crap you've got to deal with, like this offseason. A lot of contracts you got to get rid of. That losing mentality, that losing culture that you have right now, you've got to get rid of it. I don't know what that takes. I don't know who you need to get rid of, who you need to add, but like it needs to change. This is a losing locker room, a losing culture right now. It's got to change, Derek. And do whatever you need to do, whether that's swing for the fences and get Jim Harbaugh in here. The culture has to change. Yeah, the Colts have now had two regimes, two losing regimes, two losing cultures. The only yeah. reason the the last regime was semi successful is because of Andrew Luck, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So and it comes back to the quarterback yeah. argument, right? <laughs> like, I mean, yep. again, yeah, the Colts have tried several times to do the carabel or carousel at quarterback, and it's just not worked. It's time to, like you said, uh, start fresh. It's time to start yeah. with the, the young quarterback that's going to be around for, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years, right? Like, that's what we need. 
Yep. Let Andrew Luck be the example. You can be absolute dog crap at drafting and still make the playoffs if you have an elite quarterback. You can. Yeah. Andrew Luck, you can that. build now, around that the them. division was trash, but. <laughs> You know, like you got to I mean, build yeah. around it, and That's especially it in this division, right? Like, and in this division, because like the the AFC and the NFC South this year have been terrible. The best teams in those divisions are literally five hundred on their records. That's mm. <laughs> that's the competition you have. Like that's that's how bad it's been, right? Like that that is something yep. that needs to be understood is the fact that you're not just that bad, but it's to the point where your division is so bad that the team that is going to win your division is going to end up having a 500 record. I mean, that's, that's how bad it's been. It's been that bad. Yep. Absolutely. So it's just, it's just a flawed, it's been a flawed thing from the beginning. I wish we would have seen it. Like, you don't build around a left guard, Derek. Like, I'm sorry, but you don't do that. You build around a quarterback. And I know at that point the Colts had a quarterback, but they had opportunities that next offseason to get a quarterback long-term, and they just didn't. They attempted, but, like, they just went with the retread option time and time again as opposed to drafting a young guy, doing what it takes to get him and building around him on that, you know, rookie contract, on that rookie deal. So that's that's what you got to do I think it's almost inevitable you do do that at this point and there's uh, some pretty good prospects so I think if you're looking to the future Colts fans it's exciting because you're gonna get potentially you know one of three options you're gonna get Bryce young um, I think Houston might take him but he you know you never know um, you might get will Levis or you might get CJ Stroud or heck you might even get Anthony Richardson you know you never know there's a couple guys here that are definitely very exciting prospects um, but I think the Colts have an opportunity to right some wrongs here and just build it the right way. Finally. Yep. We'll, uh, we'll just have to see, but clearly, you know, what has happened this season with the Indianapolis Colts being, you know, the worst team in the NFL. I mean, that's up for you guys to decide. You let us know what your thoughts are on the Colts being one of the worst teams in the NFL, if not the worst, but that's going to do it for this one, guys. Let us know your thoughts. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, Colts.